The charges tried in this case arose out of an investigation of suspected narcotics trafficking in the Park Hill neighborhood of Staten Island. Each of the three defendants were alleged to be leading drug distributors in Park Hill. The evidence at trial consisted, principally, of testimony from cooperating co-conspirators, law enforcement officers, and former members of rival drug organizations, who also had cooperation agreements. The evidence vividly chronicled the takeover of a discreet Staten Island neighborhood by fear, guns and violence, murder and mayhem. Covering a period from the early 1990s through 2011, the year of their arrest in this case, the government adduced plentiful proof to show that defendants had created and participated in what the government calls the Park Hill Enterprise. It was one of several groups warring to control the sale of narcotics in the Park Hill neighborhood. Harvey and Anthony ran the racketeering organization that was also known by their family name. A co-conspirator, James Bestman, testified that he sold drugs with the Christian Brothers in 1991, at or near the 55 Bowen Street apartment building where the Christian Brothers then lived, that they pooled their money to buy drugs, and that they had organized themselves to buy it from a single supplier, Leon Lewis. Bestman also testified that he met Jason Quinn in the early 1990s, and would see him at 55 Bowen with the Christian Brothers. He described Harvey Christian as a natural leader, who would recruit people to work for us in their drug trafficking enterprise. Bestman also acknowledged he worked with the Christian Brothers to reach customers at 160 Park Hill Avenue, a freelance building. Bestman explained how he would make hand-to-hand -hand drug sales, while Anthony and Harvey Christian physically blocked rival dealers from interfering. Bestman's description of the operations of the Park Hill Enterprise was corroborated by others. Paul Ford, also known as Uncles, a violent drug trafficker in his own right and a cooperating witness too, testified that he saw the Christian Brothers crack selling operation at 55 Bowen in the early 1990s. A short time later, the Christian Brothers lost their foothold at 160 Park Hill Avenue and moved those operations elsewhere. They soon came to control 240 Park Hill, meaning that, through violence and threats of violence, only their enterprise could deal drugs in or around that building. But, 240 Park Hill was not a lone outpost after it was taken over by the Park Hill Enterprise. Brian Humphreys, a one-time enforcer for a rival gang, testified, as yet another cooperating witness, that he saw the Christian Brothers selling crack cocaine during this period at 55 Bowen and 225 Park Hill as well. In fact, he stated that he understood the Christian Brothers controlled 55 Bowen and 225 Park Hill at the same time. In 1994, however, the Christians lost control of 240 Park Hill Avenue. It was only a setback. A parade of violent combatants, all testifying under the security blanket of a cooperation agreement, described in gory detail for the jury the turf wars fraud on the streets, in the hallways and on the roofs of Park Hill. The most notorious theater of war for the army of thugs, gunmen and drug dealers, that was the enterprise commanded by Harvey and Anthony Christian, was the 1994 battle known as the 260 Wars, that is, the war for control of the neighboring building, located at 260 Park Hill Avenue. There were numerous skirmishes and a colossal pitched battle. Lamar Goodwine, a rival gang member, told the jury that he had engaged in numerous violent shootouts with the Christian brothers and Quinn. Describing a scene perhaps not believable if staged in a Hollywood movie, Goodwine spoke of a rooftop shootout with the Park Hill Enterprise Army. The rival sides, he said, fired weapons at each other from 225 and 260 Park Hill Avenue. Paul Ford, who, at various times, was a member of the Park Hill Enterprise, joined the Christians at the battleground. He testified that, as the bullets flew, he saw Harvey and Anthony Christian dashing from the 260 Park Hill Avenue building to their stronghold at 55 Bowen Street, and that Harvey was brandishing an Alaska 47. He also told the jury that Anthony and Harvey Christian later told him that they had been present and firing weapons during the shootout. Yet another shootout was corroborated by police testimony and frantic 911 calls from frightened residents. When the smoke cleared, 77 spent bullet cartridges were retrieved by police, who also found the dead body of John Kennedy, a friend of the Christian Brothers, at the scene. The roiling of the Park Hill neighborhood continued for years after the 260 wars. One or another of the combatants, including the Christians, would shuffle off to jail and various alliances and supply arrangements would be made, and would be broken. Following the war, for example, Ford and the Christians entered into an arrangement in which Ford would supply drugs to the Christians, which they would sell, and share the profits with Ford. Continuing to actively manage their business and looking for every advantage, in 1997, the Christians sought to consolidate their violent control of their turf by joining the Bloods gang. In addition to making them more powerful figures, as one of their violent cohorts, Anthony Anno. 
grit, but another cooperating witness testified. The Bloods' connection also made cheaper crack supply prices available to them. By 1998, the Enterprise had gained control of 260 Park Hill. Brian Humphreys, known as Trev, was brought into the fold in 1999 by the Christians to be the Enterprise enforcer. Likely the most cold-blooded of the entire crew called to testify by the government as cooperating witnesses, Humphreys used robbery and violence to eliminate the competition. As he told the jury, he was directed by Anthony Christian to murder Corey Shankbank Brooker, one of the Enterprise's rivals. The attempt failed. But, in the logic of the underworld, Humphreys concluded that one of Brooker's associates had to be eliminated if he were to get a shot at the target Anthony Christian had given to him. This led to Humphreys firing a hail of bullets that cut down Jerome Boo Boo Estella on the streets of Park Hill in broad daylight. Immediately after mowing down Boo Boo, Humphreys said he went directly to Anthony Christian's apartment in 55 Bowen to return the gun he had used in the killing. Ford would also confirm it all by telling the jury that Anthony Christian had told him that Humphreys was Boo Boo's killer. In this same year, 1999, the Wu-Tang Clan was being investigated for their connection to these two murders. The counsel for the Christian brothers maintains that Estella was really killed after his death was ordered by members of the Wu-Tang Clan. Estella allegedly robbed family members of Requin and Riza. Humphreys was the trigger man in Estella's killing and testified against the Christian brothers. A couple of weeks before the Boo Boo shooting, Uncles, the street name of drug supplier turned informant, Paul Ford, told Humphreys about a blood named Boo Boo who just came home from jail. He stated that Boo Boo had robbed Riza's little brother and had also gotten into something with the Christian brothers, the filing reads. Riza, or Robert Fitzgerald Diggs, is one of Wu Tang's founding members. Uncles was talking about Boo Boo and said that he had just come home and robbed Riza's brother and that they would likely come after him for that. Humphreys believes Uncles was referring to members of Wu-Tang. The documents also refer to conversations between Ford, Humphreys, and Anthony Christian about Brooker. In those conversations, Ford said that Brooker robbed both Riz's brother and the cousin of another Wu-Tang member, Requin, real name Corey Woods, leading to Riz issuing a $30,000 contract to kill Brooker. Ford stated that he had previously heard that Shankbank was killed by Fife. Ford believes that Fife collected money from Riza for executing the hit, the filings read. It's not clear who Fife refers to. Humphreys was told by uncles that Riza's younger brother had a chain stolen. Shankbank owed money to the guy who sold t-shirts on Tarji Street. This guy rented cars for Shankbank and others. It is also possible that he hustled for uncles at one time. Shankbank pulled out a gun and threatened to shoot him. The guy had his daughter with him. The Christian brothers were there and Mitty said it was a good thing that he talked Shankbank out of shooting him. Uncles may have told Humphreys that the guy was rel- The worker for Shankbank was confronted. Uncles told Humphreys that a chain was snatched from Riz's younger brother, Ninth Prince. Shankbank and another blood member committed the robbery. Riz and Uncles knew one another and talked since Uncles was a best friend of power. Humphreys met Riz on three or four occasions. Uncle said that there would be repercussions and suggested they would come after Shank Bank. At a second meeting between Anthony, Humphreys, and Ford, Anthony advised that Shank Bank had robbed the Riza's brother. Anthony stated again that Shank Bank was a problem. Ford recalled that this meeting occurred at 55 Bowen Street. Ford believed that upon hearing that Shank Bank had robbed Riza's brother, Nine Prince, Humphreys wanted to show what he was capable of doing. Ford further offered that Humphreys was feeding into whatever information Anthony was providing him. Ford explained that it was alleged that both Anthony and Riza had separate contracts or separate reason to get rid of Shank Bank. Ford recalled that Fife met with Fatima LNU and Jihad NFI in Virginia and advised them about his receipt of the money from RZA for the killing of Shank Bank. Ford explained that even though Fife was close with Shank Bank, he held Shank Bank responsible for the death of Boo Boo, believing that if it was not for the problem Shank Bank had with Riza, Boo Boo would still be alive. Prosecutors maintained that the Christian's brothers were responsible for bother murders. The prosecutors say Estella was slain, so he wouldn't tell Brooker, a rival drug dealer, about the plot to murder him. So Wu Tang is innocent. Representatives for Wu had not responded to request for comment at press time and were ultimately innocent and unrelated to the crimes, say the court. The 1990s drug racketeering activities of the Park Hill Enterprise led by the Christians carried over well into the new millennium. The jury heard blood-chilling accounts of control by violence and brazen disrespect for lawful authority. 
Hawaii Cooley testified that, in 2004, when he could not pay for the marijuana he had been sold by Anthony Christian, Anthony assaulted him in the lobby of 55 Bowen. Cooley fought back, but was immediately confronted by more Enterprise soldiers, including Harvey Christian, and received more than 50 stitches to close the resulting stab wound in his neck. A few months later, in 2005, the Christian brothers interfered with the attempted arrest of three men loitering in the lobby of 55 Bowen. The jury was told how Harvey Christian prevented police officers from handcuffing the third suspect. Harvey Christian announced loudly to the police that they could not make the arrest. What are you doing? You're not arresting them. Anthony then physically blocked the two police officers from pursuing the fleeing suspect. The Christians and a group of about 20 the Christians led taunted the officers, challenging them to return and to try to arrest them. Reinforced, the police did return to 55 Bowen to arrest the Christians for obstructing the earlier arrests. They resisted. The pepper sprayed Harvey, fled down a stairway, but was able to slam one of the pursuing officers into a wall, which resulted in the officer's hospitalization. The government provided proof through live testimony, wiretaps and consensual surreptitious video recordings that permitted a reasonable jury to conclude beyond a reasonable doubt that the enterprise's hallmark use of drugs, guns and violence continued right down to the time of the arrests made in 2011. Paul Ford testified that he was one of the crack suppliers in 2010 and 2011, not only for the Christian brothers, but also for their affiliate, Jason Quinn. Felix Grant, another crack supplier, testified that he wholesaled to Harvey Christian on at least 15 occasions in 2011. Often, those drugs were picked up by lower echelon workers for the racketeering enterprise, usually Robert Boy Boy Fields and Jamie Mo Mo Booker. It was Harvey Christian who introduced Quint to Grant, telling Grant that he needed drugs for his man. For three or four months thereafter, Quinn would call Grant directly to make purchases of cocaine. And, there was still more for the jury to consider. The year 2011 brought other episodes demonstrating how entrenched the racketeering enterprise run by the Christian brothers, with its ever-expanding entanglements, was in the Park Hill neighborhood. The jury heard of the parking lot shootout between Anthony Christian and William Jones, also known as Buddha, which, as Ford testified, occurred after the Christians told Ford that they were having big-time trouble with Buddha. The jury heard recorded phone conversations between Harvey Christian and Jason Quinn discussing the relative merits of the packaging and sale of various quantities of crack cocaine in their marketplace. There were recorded conversations played for the jury in which Quinn and Grant discuss a drug delivery Quinn was expecting from him. Recorded conversations between Harvey Christian and Quinn discussing supply problems following Grant's arrest were also played for the jury. Lastly, of course, the jury heard of the arrests that were made in 2011. That evidence was highlighted by the arrest of Jason Quinn, because it was in the course of that arrest that cocaine, drug packaging paraphernalia and a strategically located and loaded firearm were seized, and later received in evidence at trial. Here are other allegations surrounding Wu Tang. A 10-page document submitted by the NYPD to the FBI on August 17, 1999, detailed the chain of events surrounding the alleged murder of Robert Poo Johnson, a known Wu Tang Clan associate who was killed on December 30, 1997. Allegedly the Wu-Tang Clan purchased numerous guns from the Steubenville, Ohio, area, later claiming that the sellers identified the rappers through a photo spread presented to them. At least one of the guns involved in this purchase, a black Glock .40 caliber, model number 27, was identified as the murder weapon in the killing of Robert Johnson, aka Poo, on Stanton Island, New York, on December 30, 1997. According to the file, Johnson was an associate of the WTC who had a falling out with the group, and it is believed that his murder was ordered by someone within the WTC. On July 1, 1998, All Dirty Bastard gave detectives a description of being robbed and shot. According to ODB's account, he was asleep in bed and awoke to a gun in his face, wrestled with his assailant, and shots went off. ODB was shot in the left arm and back. The jewelry, including a link chain with a seven charm on it, and rings valued at about $10,000 total, was removed from ODB's body by one of the masked gunmen. Before it all went down, ODB said his sister heard that he was to be hit. ODB then drove himself to St. John's Hospital for treatment. ODB declined to investigate who robbed him because he did not want to cause problems for his family, who still lived in the projects where the robbery occurred. Just over a week later, on July 9, a man named Ishmael Hidi Kerma received six fatal gunshot wounds in Steubenville, Ohio. 
That same day, police allegedly performed a car stop on a vehicle with New Jersey plates in the same town where the Wu-Tang Clan was alleged to have purchased guns and a shotgun, ammo, and gun holster were recovered from the vehicles. On January 15, 1999, All Dirty Bastard was allegedly involved in a shootout with NYPD officers following a car stop in Brooklyn, but a Brooklyn grand jury failed to indict him on attempted murder charges. Lastly, on March 11, 1999, All 